we're moving fast toward, toward the, towards the end. Uh, we're obviously all getting a bit tired. Uh, we've been here for a while. Uh, Paulo Maris, Mauricio is next. Exactly. Thank you, Guilherme. He leads the big data and machine learning uh, engineering teams at uh, Deloitte. And, uh, and my question to you would be like... Shoot it. Shoot it. <laughs> we've been speaking about data science, this and that, all day long. Why would you be able, how would you be able to, you know, challenge the, the, the vibe, talk. the talk? Challenge like, everyone. What, what <clears throat> could machine learning do for us at this moment that we're so, getting we, so tired? It's a yeah, good question. Uh, we have le uh, listened a lot about data science, machine learning. Uh, what, what we thought bringing to, to, to the talk today was not just on the, the, the use cases itself, Glenn was asking me what do we bring differently. Is actually what we have seen that companies struggle a lot and we struggle as well is from the value you, we produce in the, those use cases, how can we make them uh, deploy and make them live on their own in production? And that's what we thought bringing today. Uh, I'll, I'm Paul Maurice from Deloitte, I'll be doing the talking. I, I will invite Rolf Herrera from Deloitte to do the showing because in the end we'll try to sh show you something. So, why this title, Delivering Scalable Machine Learning Workflows with Kubernetes? Uh, this technology, I don't know if you are familiar or not, it's a technology very, very trendy nowadays already in domains, in complex domains such as microservices, big data, cloud native applications, and companies such as Google, that they felt the need as they mature in the AI domain, felt the need to uh, modernize their practice to introduce new technologies to make it more scalable, more resilient, more autonomous as well. And some of these tools, all open source, were actually produced by these large companies such as uh, Google. And by the way, for our curiosity, I've seen that Many of you are um, data scientists or work in the field. How many have crossed uh, with Docker containers or uh, Kubernetes? Please raise your hand if you have. I can see only a few hands. Probably more shy hands in, the, in there. Hope so. So what, a little bit for context. We, what's, this is no news to anyone. Uh, data nowadays and intelligent machines are growing so rapidly that we alone cannot keep extracting more and more value from it. It's uh, how we keep challenging and changing businesses and society as well is literally being defined by how we worked with the machines. And we have listened to some talks today about that as well. And that is very key, how we work with these machines we are creating, especially as we enter these new eras uh, around uh, more kind of amplified intelligence. At Deloitte, Portugal, it's a little bit what we are seeing a little bit across multiple industries. We have been helping customers or our clients delivering machine learning use cases. But what we see, and that's why we brought this topic today, what we have seen around the key challenges when these use cases go live. This means when companies feel the need to automate the value we generate from data science use cases is when the real pain starts. Right? Because in real life, machine learning can become quite complex in the enterprise world. Oh, please raise your hands when you see, this is not us talking, when you see this message, please raise your hands if you sympathize with Gina. The data scientists, okay, I can see a few, not many. Okay, this is really tr uh, true. And why is it so hard from us? Sometimes we see at the beginning of a, a use case of this journey that we start creating AI labs, experiments around data science use cases. But sooner or later, we start realizing that getting real value out of it in production and act on this value can become quite complex. And some of these applications, the value might not even come and it takes literally too long. And the key reason is because machine learning, 
Actually, it's a, a long workflow of machine learning. It is, in the enterprise level, it is complex. And why it is complex? Because it's not just building models. If we look to your left, when we start ingesting the data, uh, transforming the data, storing, creating our features, storing in our feature store, all these steps, they are independent, and they, they face or they bring us different challenges because of the volume of data, because the methods we want to use. Different challenges might mean different technologies, and this complexity needs to be dealt with. Then we go into the modeling again. Before, we might use Spark to distribute the processing. Then we might need to train deep nets using, I don't know, TensorFlow. These technologies change as we go along the machine learning workflow. And in the end, naturally, as we try to roll out and govern these applications in production, because we want them to be in production and live on their own, it brings different challenges as well. So how, why are so many companies facing this? And how are companies such as Google and other matured companies dealing with this? Okay, that's when we started to look at their approach and started to introduce Docker and Kubernetes. Docker, if you allow me the comparison, for those that don't know, is a kind of uh, a lighter VM where you can control your environment. The application or the code can live on its own, and you control all dependencies. And Kubernetes, it's an open source technology, actually came from Google. Uh, to manage these containers and orchestrate the containers, okay? And brings really, really cool features that I'll mention. But what does it mean to us, okay? Kubernetes, literally, not just machine learning engineers, but it really means peace. Peace in the sense that it works, and it works. And it's what we have been learning from matured companies. And, but for those features, what, what is it? really for us, to the machine lear learning uh, world. And we are bringing this technology kind of a challenge to try to push forward everyone that works on the field. So we have bundled a little bit the key features in these uh, four categories. Composability. I said that on the workflow we have the need to have multiple steps, and each step might have different challenges. So composability means the true flexibility to bring the right tools for data scientists to bring the right tools that they need for each step. Whether you are transforming at scale or you are training models, each, each container can have can has its own technology stack. Then portability. Portability for those familiar with this technology mean is literally you develop on your local machine and you expect it to run in staging or in production because you control the environment, it's easier for you to deploy and then to automate. <coughs> Scalability. You will see this in the demo that we will show you. Way more interesting than what I'm talking about. Scalability means not just in terms of resources, means having the ability out of the box to have multiple jobs, pipelines, teams working the same platform. This works really well in the cloud, but as well on premises. And f as a key example, how does this reflect in benefits is if you have a model in production and it is in serving, through, for instance, through a REST API, if the consumer systems keep requesting uh, results or decisions, Kubernetes, if it feels that the container is not being able to produce results to all requests, it will automatically spin replicas in parallel and allow you to scale in the deploying mode. Last one, automation. This is so important nowadays, it, it doesn't even, it, it's not a differentiating feature. It should be in the core of any project nowadays, if it's, it's ML or software development, any kind. Bringing automation to, to the table just means that uh, data scientists, machine learning engineers can focus in what's key which is producing the code that's adding value. And automating everything in the machine learning world is now called MLOps. It is built automating from the training, the packaging, the validating of your models. This is really, really important. You will see in the demo 
uh, our flexibilities to, to deploy new models. So trying to go to explain a little bit why we came to this demo. What, because nowadays you have so many tools, so many technology in a data science field or machine learning, especially when you go into production, is you, feel, you start feeling the need to not just inventing every time you have a new project, kind of uh, productizing your practice. Okay? And because at Deloitte, we do a lot of these uh, use cases, what you'll see is that we have been moving from a ad hoc custom build practice, where we do ad hoc implementations every time, and natural step of the technology adoption, prioritizing our practice, making it applying best practices on this product, make sure that it is reused, and naturally provide out-of-the-box automation. So what it is and how can, uh, or what Kubernetes brought to us, okay? Because Kubernetes allows you to bring all the containers and orchestrate everything. What we have done and will show, it's on top of Kubernetes, we have brought all open source technologies that we use in our projects. You'll see Jupyter Notebooks, you'll see Jenkins for Automation, you'll see here tons of stuff. We have basically put everything on Kubernetes, we have configured, uh, make sure that on our projects, we are able to use these tools the, and apply the best practices across projects. Okay, so what Rul is about to show you is we cannot do everything, but the key features of uh, Kubernetes, how you can apply MLOps and automate from the development to the model serving, and because model serving is really, really important nowadays, which means applications and workflows living in live environments with minimum un uh, human intervention. Roll. Yeah. Do your best. Thank you, Paolo. So we are now going to pass um, a really short demo uh, in video format. We are using video, of course, because things in ML, they, they, take to think, they tend to take a long time. Um, this is going to be a bit technical, uh, but hopefully it will serve to shed some light on the ideas that Paulo was presenting, and also on how Kubernetes can be, can be useful to machine learning. Uh, this will also be a representation of what our technical delivery typically is. Uh, of course, when we are working with clients that want to scale their machine learning practice. So this whole idea of having uh, an ML platform is, is, is mostly supported by, one, um, the need to have a standard process by which you can deliver machine learning. Uh, two, of course, the benefits of having a high degree of automation. Uh, and also the need to, to ensure that you have visibility and monitoring capability over every machine learning asset uh, that you might have. So, and from an enterprise perspective, this has several benefits. The most obvious being an increased developer velocity for, for your machine learning teams, and also ensuring that you can easily manage the end-to-end lifecycle of these types of services. So, moving on to the demo. Okay. Yeah, so one of our big focus is, of course, to ensure that you have visibility over every model that is currently being deployed on the platform. So here we, we see a list of all of the possible active deployments. And if we go with more detail to, um, to a particular one, here we see a visual representation of the runtime graph for this service. Um, so in an enterprise context, uh, these graphs can rapidly become quite complex, as you probably know. So typically, you'll have some input, you'll transform it to extract relevant features. Uh, you can then enrich it, um, probably with a query to a database to provide some context. And then you can even be running schemes e with even, one than the, even more than one model. So all of this complexity will, of course, need to be managed. Um, here, every step will run as a different container on the platform. And the platform will just take care of all of the wiring uh, that is necessary to execute the whole graph. Okay, so 
Additionally, and in another panel, we, ha we have here um, a central dashboard where you can see in real time every aspect of the model lifecycle. So most of these panels are actually provided out of the box. So things like the number of requests per second see, or the latency in the response. So everything that you, do, that you actually need to operate and monitor a machine learning model. Um, scalability is, of course, also a huge concern. For instance, we see here that we, the model is serving around four requests per second, and to do so is using one instance uh, of this service. Uh, and in order to test out the scalability, if we were to run, yeah, if we were to run now a load test to kind of simulate a peak in traffic, which we are doing now, we'll see that as the, um, as the volume of the request increases, the number of replicas, so the, the platform responds by automatically uh, increasing the number of replicas. So this is something that is quite generic and can be used then for every uh, deployment, uh, providing us the scalability that some use cases might require. If we now remove the, um, the load test, which we are doing now, we'll see that the number of service uh, of replicas will be reduced, of course, accordingly. So in a nutshell, this is kind of the, the serving layer, so the model serving layer of the platform. Um, the, other one, the other big one uh, is, of course, the one which is concerned with the training workflows. So this model allows us to orchestrate machine learning pipelines at scale, while also providing us with the governance uh, over the whole process. So if, again, we take the same example, uh, we have here now a visual representation, this time, of the training workflow. So the idea here is to encapsulate everything that is actually needed to train and deploy a machine learning model. So every step here will also be a different container. So you can run any language or framework that you want. This basically provides you with the, with the governance benefits of having a standardized process without actually removing flexibility from your teams in terms of technologies that they can use. We should also mention that everything here is defined as code, uh, which basically means that it's easily automated, so automation is easily achieved. And as an example, now we are just going to, to try to release uh, a new version of this product recommendation service. So a push to a Git server will kind of trigger the whole process. Uh, and with this, we'll see that a new experiment is automatically created, associated with this workflow to run the new version of the code. So by doing so, we can make sure that we can keep track of every experiment that is associated with a given project, of course, for compliance reasons. And then the, when the workflow is actually executing, you can follow along, you can have access to the artifacts and the logs, to debug in case something, you know, something breaks. Multiple steps can be run in parallel. We see there a step to version the data, of course, for compliance reasons. The training job is now running. But more, more generally, we believe that working with Kubernetes brings a lot of structure to your ML processes. It also brings you a lot of reusability, because you can take each one of these components and share them and reuse them with other teammates. So once the pipeline has actually finished the execution, we'll just make sure that the new version was successfully rolled out to the platform. And we see that uh, the platform is already serving uh, requests to the, to the new model there in yellow. So, our key point is really that you can easily achieve these levels of automation and governance if you take Kubernetes as the central piece of your machine learning ecosystem. Oh. Thank you, Raul. Hope you enjoyed. <coughs> I'm looking at your face. Some of you are still awake, which is good. I understand that it's, it has been a tough day. Um, so these are our faces. Okay? If you have done that LinkedIn connect to the, the, your friends nearby, you'll find us. Feel free to ask any question. And, and um, remember this talk as a push forward. Matured companies such as Google, 
and others are already pushing the boundaries of you, how you implement machine learning workflows in the enterprise and specifically complex companies, why shouldn't we follow those good practices? Thank you, everyone. Hope you follow. Thank you very much. You met the challenge. Thank you. <laughs>